I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering and we are talking about the methods which are used for uh, modifying the surface properties so that the required improvement in uh, mechanical performance as well as the wear uh, resistance can be improved. Uh, under this uh, heading we have talked uh, about the various uh, methods uh, related with the surface modification without changing the surface composition just surface metallurgy is uh, modified so that the required improvement in surface uh, properties can be achieved. Uh, under this uh, we have talked about those methods which are were which were related with the transformation hardening then um, the methods which were related with the remelting of the substrate and also we have uh, uh, talked about the two methods where in the controlled surface layer deformation is used to enhance the surface properties through the uh, work hardening uh, through the grain refinement as well as sometimes uh, uh, through the deformation assisted transformation hardening. Uh, now we will talk about uh, one more uh, method of the uh, one more method where controlled surface layer deformation is used uh, to enhance the surface properties. So, uh, that method is the friction stair processing. Uh, in friction stir processing like uh, the surface whose properties are to be improved are uh, modified using uh, using a particular tool like say this is the tool having a shoulder which comes in contact with the surface and then there is a pin which is also called probe. So, this is basically tool pin and this is the shoulder tool shoulder which comes in contact of the uh, surface. Now, initially the tool is rotated work piece is fixed or it is stationary and gradually tool is plunged. So, the first step here the rotating tool pin is plunged into the work piece or the substrate. So, gradually plunging will lead to the entry of the pin uh, in the substrate up to the required depth. So, the pin length will be um, according to the depth which is uh, depth up to which surface layers are to be modified. And once this uh, the pin is a uh, pin uh, penetrates the work piece completely the shoulder also comes in contact with the work piece. So, the continuous rotation of the shoulder in contact with the substrate as well as rotation of the pin. Um, which has been plunged into the work piece. This uh, leads to the controlled uh, movement of material from one side to another. Uh, like say from uh, uh, if we see this uh, in the top view. So, this is the location where pin has been um, uh, plunged and this is the location where the shoulder is in contact. This is the line of action along which the surface is to be modified. Then there will be continuous movement of the material as per the rotation of the work rotation of the tool. There will be continuous movement of the material from the uh, one side to another and in this process uh, severe plastic deformation at a high rate takes place. That rate is uh, to a great extent influenced by the rotational speed of the tool and the normal load under which uh, normal load uh, under which the tool uh, um, is in contact with the work piece and under which this kind of processing is being 
carried out. So, severe plastic deformation at a high strain rate leading to the movement of material during the processing from one side to another. Uh, this actually leads to the uh, the uh, severe plastic deformation leads to the various uh, leads to the various effects one is like fracturing of all grains and all phases precipitates whatever are present in the modified zone so, if uh, the complete churning is taking place in this area, then the all the constituents which are present, they will be fractured, refined. Uh, so, this kind of uh, thing will be leading to the, so this kind of situation will be leading to the, uh, to a particular situation where uh, combination of the plastic deformation plus heat generation. 1 due to the friction and second due to the plastic deformation. So, the plastic deformation leads to the elongation, fracturing of the various grains and precipitates followed by heat generation leads to the deformation assisted recrystallization. So, basically if a thin layer up to certain depth has been severely deformed, severely deformed uh, then uh, and uh, at the same time heat is also generated high enough, then these two situations lead to the uh, recrystallization recrystallization and this re recrystallization uh, which is basically happening during the rotation of the tool uh, in the work piece or the substrate itself uh, is called dynamic recrystallization uh, and this basically causes the significant refinement of the constituents which were present in the substrates. So, whether it is the matrix or all the phases which were present, they will be refined. This is one thing. Second, the severe uh, plastic deformation also leads to the significant work hardening as per the type of the material. If the material is having low stacking fault energy, then the extent of increase in the properties in terms of hardness and tensile strength that is too much as compared to the other cases where the material is uh, precipitation hardenable, then the work hardening effect is not much and uh, uh, the simply refinement will be taking place. So, the, the, the type of metal system actually plays a big role uh, as far as the change in properties after such kind of the processing is concerned like in friction stir processing where in we are although refining the grain structure, but all the constituents are being refined and sometimes they get dissolved completely. So, a reversion or complete dissolution of these precipitates and the phases take place in the matrix. So, if these precipitates or the phases are contributing significantly uh, to the metal properties, then despite of refinement, we do not get much improvement in the hardness and strength. And this is a particular case like we can have the heatable metal systems and we can have the other work hardenable systems. So, in case of the heat treatable systems which get uh, their strength from the presence of particular kind of phases, presence of particular kind of precipitates and if these precipitates which are present in the matrix here and there after the FSP all these will get be, you know, be broken, refined and fractured to such an extent that they may get completely dissolved in the matrix. So, we may get very homogeneous and the refined uh, very fine matrix, 
but uh, the dissolution and uh, complete reversion or elimination of this kind of precipitates in heatable systems despite of refinement leads to the reduction in the hardness reduction in the tensile strength with the increase of percentage elongation because percentage uh, uh, re refinement leads to the improvement in elongation and uh, but at the same time reduction in hardness and tensile strength takes place. So, this is one side and other metal systems which are strengthened primarily by the work hardening in those cases uh, primarily uh, we get the increase in hardness and strength due to the strain hardening effect which is imparted to the uh, the uh, the plastically deformed metal near the surface uh, layers during the FSP of the material. So, there can be very vast variation uh, in terms of the properties uh, after the FSP uh, of the surface layers. So, what uh, uh, kind of the variations in these can be like if we take uh, aluminum copper alloys, aluminum silicon, magnesium alloys and aluminum zinc magnesium alloys like 6000 series aluminum alloy, 2000 series aluminum alloy and 7000 series aluminum alloy. All these uh, uh, kind of the alloys, these are the precipitation hardenable alloys, these are heat treatable alloys. So, they get their strength from the presence of precipitates and such kind of the metals when it is subjected to the FSP through the use of the suitable tool and surface layer is modified up to the certain depth uh, through the plastic deformation despite of getting very fine grain structure like grain refinement may be from 50 micrometer to 5 to 6 micrometer as well. But despite of this we find that there has been significant reduction in the hardness uh, because uh, these alloys are the precipitation hardenable and uh, the phases like Mg2 Si in 6000 series and uh, MgZn2 in 7000 series and uh, CuAl2 uh, in 2000 series alloys. These precipitates actually after FSP, these are mixed up or dissolved with the matrix itself and uh, uh, since the strength was uh, primarily coming from these uh, uh, precipitates and if these get dissolved, then our hardness is uh, reduced at the surface. Uh, so, in this particular case, if we, if we see that in this uh, substrate, if uh, this is the zone which has been FSP and we try to check the hardness from the A to B then variation in hardness from the location A to the location B we may notice that the hardness here is high up to this much distance hardness is same and as soon as we get there is a drop in the hardness like this and then again hardness. Uh, increases as soon as it is crossed. So, this is the zone, uh, this is the zone which we can say this is the FS speed zone, friction stir process zone showing the lower hardness. On the other hand, if we take uh, that this uh, material which has been FS speed in a particular zone and uh, then we try to like say in case of the steels, simple carbon steel or alloy steels, if uh, Again, we take A and B, the two, uh, the two points and along which uh, the, uh, in case of the steel uh, uh, subject to the FSP and if we try to measure the hardness, then the hardness may be lower and as soon as uh, the, we reach to the uh, FSP zone, we find the significant increase in hardness and then again soft zone is observed. So, if we see there is a lot of difference um, in, in the type of metal system and the hardness uh, the kind of hardness trend that they show after the FSP. So, for work hardenable systems uh, and uh, those which respond to respond effectively to the transformation hardening during the FSP, 
uh, the, there is a significant difference in the hardness and so the, there, there will be significant difference in the wear resistance which will be offer, uh, observed in the two cases. So, here if we see uh, the here we can say after FSP softening is taking place and here uh, in the FSP zone hardening is taking place. So, the hardening here is attributed in case of the steels or such kind of systems is attributed to the two factors one is the work hardening and the second is the transformation uh, occurring due to the heat generation followed by rapid cooling. So, basically this is the transformation hardening uh, which is also observed. So, initially if we see if initially uh, in the alloys we had precipitates like this in aluminum alloys these will be vanished in the FSP zone and only the aluminum matrix will be visible while in case of the steels initially if we had uh, like the mixture of the ferrite and perlite, ferrite perlite. Uh, at the surface after FSP it will get transformed primarily into the martensite and the perlite. So, the formation of the martensite and perlite at the surface will be leading to the improvement in the hardness improvement in wear resistance. So, this is what we can see FSP uh, of the heat treatable alloys can lead to the reduction in hardness while FSP of the heat treatable uh, sorry heat treatable aluminum alloys can lead to the reduction in hardness while in case of the steels FSP can lead to the significant improvement uh, in terms of the hardness and the wear resistance. Now, uh, so what are the purposes of uh, the FSP which will be realized? There is one main purpose is to modify the surface structure for uh, for uh, required properties. So, the surface modification uh, for the required properties this may be in terms of the required increase in hardness or development of the residual compressive stresses. Uh, then uh, there is a, uh, there is another so in this case basically structural modification is achieved and uh, if we more precisely see whenever the structure is refined primarily we find that there is an increase in percentage elongation of the material so uh, which is observed across the metal systems and then there is another side apart from just a structural modification uh, the FSP is also used for uh, for eliminating the defects uh, created or imparted during manufacturing stage. So, like a comp if a component is produced using the casting process and it has a like pores and inclusions like this at the surface. So, when FSP is carried out the material consolidation by the severe plastic deformation happens and in this process all those zones wherever the defects and inclusions were present all these defects are collapsed all the and consolidated. So, all types of the porosities whether they are, these are gas porosity or shrinkage porosity all these will be collapsed and consolidated by the severe uh, plastic deformation which is being realized at the surface layer. So, all such kind of the pores will be eliminated and if there are fine inclusions then these will be broken down if there are uh, inclusions like this which are non metallic these inclusions will be broken down into the fine pieces. So, the fine inclusion particles present here and there either they will get mixed up with the matrix or their size will be reduced to such an extent that their adverse effect on the mechanical properties 
uh, will be reduced drastically. So, FSP also helps in eliminating the defects if these were imparted during the manufacturing processes or it can also be used to eliminate cracks if these are there at the surface because severe plastic deformation will eliminate the uh, any such kind of the cracks if they are there at the surface FSP will lead to the severe plastic deformation of all those near surface layers and will consolidate all such kind of the discontinuities if they are present at the surface. So, uh, there are a uh, few uh, favorable effects of the FSP one improves the mechanical properties to eliminates the eliminates the defects and discontinuities and third it also helps to uh, develop helps to develop new composite surface layers uh, so, as, as, as I have said the mechanical property improvement is achieved through the grain refinement, through the work hardening and sometimes even through the transformation hardening. But the, if these mechanisms are not good enough to achieve the required improvement in mechanical properties, then sometimes a, a, a combination of such kind of the properties are required. Uh, which cannot be achieved only through the structural modification. In that case, FSP can also be used to develop the composite materials. So, in that case, what we do uh, uh, like this is the surface. So, we will be drilling the holes here and there like this. This is one approach or we will make a, a slot like this and we will fill the in the slot we will fill the constituent that, that we want to reinforce to make the composite material and similarly the, the reinforcing agent will be filled in these holes. And after that FSP of the surface is carried out so that uh, uh, these uh, particles get uniformly distributed in the FSP zone. So, all these particles will get uh, uniformly distributed after the FSP. So, if uh, this is the surface and at the surface we have introduced uh, some of the re reinforcing agent uh, when FSP is carried out the modified zone is created like this and all these particles get uniformly distributed in the FSP zone. So, whenever uh, we achieve a situation where at the surface the particles need to be introduced of such kind of constituents which will help to improve the properties uh, desired at the surface and which cannot simply be offered by the substrate itself then we need to introduce some of the reinforcing agent and for that purpose we have to make a composite. So, basically in composites we will have one matrix and one uh, means the reinforcing agents. These reinforcing agents uh, will impart the different kind of the properties as compared to that of the matrix and matrix plays primarily role of uh, holding such kind of the particles in it. So, the dis completely dissimilar kind of the properties are realized through the uh, presence of the uh, reinforcing agent. Say um, like in aluminum we can reinforce graphite or we can reinforce tungsten carbide, we can reinforce silicon carbide, aluminum being very soft and ductile while these proper these materials this is soft offers the solid lubrication effect uh, while uh, these particles are very hard and brittle. So, once the um, these particles are reinforced in the soft matrix then they will be able to provide the required support to the surface layers will be able to provide the support to the external load 
uh, whenever load is applied through the surface layers. So, basically uh, the presence of such hard particles like tungsten carbide, silicon carbide in aluminum matrix reinforced through the FSP, they will, uh, they will provide the required support to the matrix to take the external load. So, resistance to the deformation is enhanced which in turn increases the yield strength which in turn also increases the hardness. So, once uh, these are present then they will be improving the wear resistance of the material. This is one purpose. Similarly, in aluminum matrix which are used for making the pistons and other components wherever the metal to metal rubbing is uh, involved like in adhesive wear conditions what we try to do the graphite is reinforced in the aluminum uh, alloys so that uh, whenever these are present these will be acting as a solid lubricant because these graphites will be forming a thin layer over the surface of the substrate and thereby they will be reducing the direct metal to metal contact and uh, so they will be able to reduce the adhesive wear of the material. So, basically adhesive wear resistance is improved through the presence of uh, such kind of the <coughs> graphite while abrasive wear resistance can be enhanced through the presence of such hard uh, reinforcing agent in the soft uh, matrix. It may be aluminum, it may be cobalt, it may be iron or anything else wherever we find that conventional methods of uh, putting such kind of the reinforcing agent in the matrix is not feasible, their FSP can be effectively applied. So, in this case the mechanism, the basic mechanism which uh, is helping to enhance the properties. So, in case of FSP what we can say? FSP the dispersion hardening like presence of tungsten carbide, chromium carbide in aluminum matrix will be enhancing the hardness and wear resistance to the dispersion hardening. Transformation hardening like through the transformation of austenite into the martensite is facilitated when FSP of the steels like carbon steel or alloy steel is carried out. Even there can be a deformation assisted, deformation assisted transformation in case of the high manganese steels had field steels. So, that can lead to the improvement. Uh, another mechanism which can work for improvement in properties is the grain refinement, the refinement of the grain structure. Whatever grains are there, whatever unfavorable grain morphologies like in aluminum silicon alloys, if we are having the, the big primary silicon particles or needle shaped eutectic silicon particles, these will be weakening the material with regard to the mechanical properties and the wear resistance because needle shape structures act as a good stress raiser and which in turn uh, nucleate the cracks easily and uh, reduce their capability to take up the load and so when um, the FSP of such kind of system is carried out uh, these primary big particles are broken down to the a small size and needle shape particles are also broken down to the a small size. So, such kind of the fracturing and refinement of the big unfavorable phases into the fine size helps to improve the wear resistance, improve the hardness, uh, improve the mechanical properties. Now, if we see whenever FSP is carried out, there will always be uh, like this is the surface uh, of the substrate and FSP is carried out by passing the tool along a particular uh, direction like this. And in this direction, if we take the sample from this direction which is perpendicular to the FSP direction and if we take sample from the longitudinal, longitudinal direction which is the direction of the FSP. So, this one will be termed as longitudinal, longitudinal and this one is the, the, and the sample taken from the transverse direction with the tr transverse direction sample. The, the, the samples taken from the two directions of the FSP region will be showing the different value of the uh, mechanical properties. So, say if this is an example of the heat treatable aluminum alloys like aluminum 
zinc magnesium when subjected to the FSP. So, the base metal in general shows a good uh, strength high UTS stress and strain for the base metal. Uh, whenever FSP is carried out, grain structure is refined significantly. However, the matrix, um, uh, the precipitates present in the matrix are dissolved. So, uh, in this situation, what we find that our elongation, longitudinal direction shows somewhat lower strength but greater ductility. Uh, so, this is for the longitudinal direction. F speed sample, F speed sample taken from the longitudinal direction. Well, the F speed sample taken from the transverse direction shows somewhat higher strength, but the lower uh, ductility. Uh, so, we, we will notice that even the F speed material also which uh, where in the, uh, the structure is uh, uh, significantly refined through the fracturing and uh, the dynamic recrystallization. These also show uh, some kind of an isotropy in the, uh, in the longitudinal direction, it shows much better elongation as compared to that in the, uh, the transverse direction. Now, I will summarize this uh, presentation. In this presentation, basically I have talked about friction stir processing. Friction stir processing can be used for three purposes. One is improving the mechanical properties and so the wear resistance is enhanced. The second purpose is to eliminate the surface defects if they are there at the surface due to the manufacturing issues and uh, the surf, uh, FSP can also be used to make the surface composites. Thank you for your attention.